I didn't need to think or have anybody tell me. I just knew I was going to make it. The main focus I always had was on color. And sometimes the animal I was doing or the scene was just there for me to use color. So I would add color to animal fur. I would like a person to feel that they could live with my art, literally. I think that my art encompasses a lot, not just the actual painting or drawing, but it's my world. I love these photographs, so um, I think I might do this one. I always start the oil paint with a black gesso. And um, I just felt the inks became so vibrant on the black. It's just finding the right color. There's so many greens, it doesn't matter. They all work together. Instead of being dark, they're like a gray green, a really blue-gray green. A gray, a blue-gray. When I think of cactus, I think of stiffness, but all these are very fluid, and that's the way I like to I paint not stiff. Well, in high school, I took art classes. The art teacher used to take me into a back room and she would say to me, draw, just draw. And then she'd close the door and I'd be hearing all this wild things going on in the art class because they were the bad kids from the high school. And then they would open the door and laugh at me. I mean, they'd say, what are you doing in here? I was doing some drawing, but I wasn't very interested. I mean, I wasn't serious. But my parents never, never encouraged me. All I really cared about was art class. Many years later, my parents said something about, well, we didn't want you to go to art school because we didn't want you socializing with other artists. They thought they were probably wild liberal people. <laughs> I enrolled at ASU to get my BFA. Both daughters were in grammar school. It was busy. I could be gone from the house for seven hours. It was just a lot of work. I, I didn't want to not be part of my daughter's life. With this landscape, I, I was experimenting in a way.
visually I had to figure out some some colors. My favorite part is definitely the century plant. In fact, I thought as I was working along that I would like to do a whole field of century plants. So I ended up finishing the ASU. And then I had no idea what I was going to do. I was at home when I got a call from an old friend who had just been headmaster of the middle school at Phoenix Country Day School. And he said to me, Carol, come quick. They're looking for an art teacher. And they said, well, we have a part-time job for art and a part-time job for teaching middle school history. And they said, we know your husband's a professor of history, so you must be able to teach history. And I just looked and I was so shocked. I went home and I thought about it and I thought, I can't teach middle school history. That afternoon, a woman came in looking for a job as a history teacher. And they called me quickly and said, the job is yours if you want. And I taught from uh, kindergarten to eighth grade. The top parents of the top galleries in Scottsdale's children went to Phoenix Country Day and I had to be very careful sending them home with fabulous projects and sometimes as their works were drying an arm might fall off and I'd quickly run around you know fixing their ceramics. That was a great job, but I was pretty frustrated after several years because I wanted to do my own work. I was able to in the summers, but that didn't last. Summers went by really quickly. We used to spend the summers in the Adirondacks. And we had an old farmhouse that we bought in an auction for $2,000, and it was rustic. I had a falling down studio that it, it worked. The light was good. We lived next to a dairy farm, so I, I would photograph the cows in the field or in the barn. So I always tried to do things that just were around around me. I mean, it was so easy when there was so much beauty and a lot of interesting animals. Cow painting. Oh, well, this one. That was a cow that lived next to me, Mona. That was part of a big cow show I had at the Fine Arts Center. One of the nicest things was my father was best friends with Benny Goodman, the clarinetist. He came to visit and I had a pastel on the wall and uh, he said, how much is this one? And I, I just, I had it framed, it was in my dining room. I said, oh, I don't know, 500? He takes out his wallet and gives me 500 and takes, the, takes it right off the wall. <laughs> I have to say that my work in Jay, in the Adirondacks, I, I have such fond memories because everything I did sold and I never dreamed I would go somewhere and people would ask for my autograph. And that happened a couple of times because I was in the newspaper and um, I got such a kick out of that. I had a show at the Fine Arts Center. The response was so good that I ended up 
asking for a leave of absence from Phoenix Country Day, and then I never returned. The photographer at the time photographing my art, he suggested I go to John Klein's. It was a printmaking studio. They were monoprints or monotypes, and I uh, had never done anything like that. I would cut my own stencils out, ink the stencils, put them on the plates, and then I started working with silk flowers I would and leaves and combining birds with landscape. And it just took off that whole look and no one else had been doing anything like it. I just um, loved the whole process. I always, I, I had to make money and I always in the back of my mind know what was going to sell. There were about eight artists that worked there. So we um, all shared a studio. Everything that we produced, he owned. He basically owned us. But the problem was they were all on drugs. They never talked in front of me because I was older and they knew I didn't do drugs. I had two children, none of them had children. They were an incredible incredibly talented people. They were innovative, and I learned so much from the whole group. We were given orders. One was that uh, Donald Trump was doing his big casino in Atlantic City, and John got the work. My assignment was to do a restaurant. Some of them I combined prints with some painting on top. So I stayed about altogether 10 or 12 years. Well, I had a lot of incredible experiences there. I worked in Prescott. I built the house and I, I built the studio that would work for a press. It took up half the studio, but I was able to do the monotypes. The, stu the studio overlooked the mountains in Prescott. It was quite wonderful. The art scene in Prescott was pretty small. I got to know all the artists there, most of them. And one of them, she wanted to open a gallery. There was another woman who was an artist. So the three of us opened it. I was doing really well, but she wasn't, and she just wanted to back out. In a way, I was glad because it took too much time. With my second marriage, once I met Buck and I, we started traveling, that was um, a period that I hardly worked. I had a gallery in Prescott who was begging me for work. So I was disappointing a lot of collectors that I had up there. I was pretty frustrated. I loved seeing Europe and and then he had homes in Mexico. That part I loved, learning about the art and the ceramics. And I did do a little work, but then towards the um, last few years, I, I did a lot of work. I was doing portraits then. Um, we had a famous designer come to our house, and I had all this work I'd been doing, and I didn't really want him to see my work because I had no encouragement. He said, my God, these are fabulous. 
I got into a gallery and it would, everything sold. That was one of the most rewarding things uh, that I ever done, was those portraits. That traveling, the travels I've had with Buck, they have had some very interesting art come from it. This painting has been a little frustrating. I've changed things as I go along. Changed the tree because I wanted to fill out the, the background plus balance the century plant. I've done animals in landscapes, but they usually take up almost the whole canvas or the pastel. I don't remember doing a desert one. So th this, was, this was different. I had a bad fall hiking and hit my head, and then I spent about seven years trying to find relief from the pain. I had a lot of pain. I barely worked. When we had our home in Puerto Vallarta, I tried to work. I just couldn't. So eventually, I, I, um, the pain became beyond severe. I had major depression. Talk about a black hole. I, I was in it for maybe two years, and finally I, I couldn't, I couldn't go on. But I, I was in the hospital for oh, quite a long time. Somebody in the hospital said she has nerve damage in her neck and she needs gabapentin, and no one had ever offered that. It started helping immediately. And then I got stronger, and here I am. If I'm painting in my studio, I just forget about pain, or it just gives me a whole nother world. It's something I have to do. I just have to. I don't know what I'd do if. I couldn't work. If I stay physically healthy, I'm having a good life now. I, I can come up here for four hours, five hours, and I'm so happy. I'm just so happy here. Well, I'm absolutely amazed at how much I've work I've done. It's strange because it's all out there. All the part of me is out from all the people that bought my work, all the shows, all the, all the different experiences I've had through my work. And I, I feel as if it's in the universe and it's a nice feeling. Oh, I don't sell now. I just do things like paintings for family. And I have a, my beautiful family that I'm very proud of. I'm not finished yet. I'm not going to stop working. And now what motivates me is something I, I feel I want to paint, something I see. I would like to start doing portraits again. I just um, do my own thing. I, I can't, I, what have I been doing lately? That thing. <laughs> that thing.